All right, welcome to another episode of It's a Long Road, the Ramble Series podcast. I am your host, Ryan, and with me today, I have some very special guests. I'm very excited because these are like friends of mine. One is more of a friend than the other because I'm just learning to get to know Brad. Well, I don't mean like levels. Like, I think I like Brad more than Sean. I've just known Sean yeah. longer. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's your older friend, but I'm your better friend, I think. Oh, that's about Yeah, you're my newer, better friend. Sean's my old, grizzled, kind of worn out friend. Yeah. Sean's the friend that'll pickle you and pretend it's fighting. I appreciate that, Brad. Thank you so much. Well, you guys are, I'm, first off, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show and saying that you will do the show with me. So we'll get going here. Sean, why don't you say where you're from and the, the podcast you guys do together, and then we'll, we'll go from there. But we'll talk about you in the podcast first. Well, Brad and I are both now from Oak Harbor out in the Pacific Northwest of Whitby Island, just south of you, mm-hmm. Ryan, just south of you. But I'm originally from Toronto, Ontario, and I rep it. I don't care. Yeah, the six is following me everywhere, okay? Don't give me that look. <laughs> yes, Toronto. The episode has already gone to the crapper with the Toronto mention. Okay, uh, Brad, uh, why don't you uh, save us a little bit here? Where are you from? Born and raised in the Pacific Northwest. My name is Brad Tesh. I am the co-host along with Sean. Uh, we do the A&B show, which is a sports podcast uh, that you can find everywhere. Sean is the typical moved across the country kid, and he's just remade himself into being whatever he wanted. He's all the cool kids doing it in Toronto. So apologies for his blustering. Uh, he also enjoys pro wrestling, so there's a bit of a heel in his attitude. So, Well, he actually is an ex-pro wrestler. Do you want to talk about your wrestling days there really quickly, Sean? Uh, you fought uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan at one point. Hacksaw you- Jim Duggan. Wow, you remembered that. Wow. Of course. It's one of my only stories I like about you. <laughs> Ah! (laughs) Once once we've seen you in that yellow banana hammock, Sean, it's really hard to forget that you fought Uh, Jim Hacksaw. I know. I remember, I remember, you know, here I am looking at Jim Hacksaw and like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Why am I saying Jim Hacksaw? Because of you, Brad. I'm looking at Hacksaw Jim Duggan. You think he's just a dumb guy. I used to play for the Argonauts, you know, and uh, ended up coming into wrestling. He had that big uh, cocaine thing with him and the Iron Sheik and the vehicle traveling together, yeah. which was like terrible. I, I was there, like, you know, got to talk to him before the match. And then all of a sudden we're in the middle of the match. The banana hammock has a problem and uh, he sees a little bit more than what he's supposed to. What are you supposed to say to that? What are you supposed to say to Hacksaw after that? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. That's why you don't banana hammocks, anything like that. Like you, you got to be careful about that because it's all about fashion faux pas. Or what do they call it? Wardrobe accidents. It's just like, it was embarrassing. When Sean wore his trunks, it wasn't a banana hammock. It was a pea pod hammock. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, Sean's wrestling name was before well, we was just, on. I, I agree. We have to complete this tale with, what was your name, yeah. w- uh, wrestling name there, Sean? Uh, I'm a uh, Fijian through my mom. Yeah, okay. Fijian. But what your dad? she was... My dad was Scottish and uh, French. Oh, man. Okay. What do you What do you think I get the Vian Cool from? Well, I thought you culturally <laughs> I thought I thought you culturally appropriated Fiji. So I'm I just I just took a French name along. My dad oh, just took it. He was he was named by a French slave trader. Okay. <laughs> so what was your wrestling that's name? More, that's more plausible than your actual story, Sean. Just to be right? Honest. I don't know. Anyways, oh yeah, it was the Fijian warrior master of the Fijian death grip. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's actually not Fijian. He's actually Indian. His mom was just from Fiji. So. See, and that's, that's what right. I wanted to say. Like first century, first century. Yes, yes. But the first century, because you're actually East Indian descent, correct? The bloodline. Yes. Yeah. So you culturally appropriated Fiji. Yes. Yes. So well, you, we had no choice. Our family had no choice. It was like, you know brought over. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, before we move on, Donald wants to know: uh, Did uh, Hacksaw win the match, or did you win? Of course he won the match. Yeah, okay. He was the he was the face in that. They paid him a thousand dollars. Who am I? Who am I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're the guy that got two cheeseburgers out of the deal. That's who you are. <laughs> Here's your meal with Axa. <laughs> and he's never looked back. He he hasn't stopped eating those cheeseburgers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys run a podcast called the A and B show, so that is A A as in Canadian, A, E H, and B mm-hmm. as in Brad. So Brad, you know, that's the letter of your name, which I like, but Sean, I guess, is representing Canada. I don't know why that is, but whatever. <laughs> See, like you took B because it's Brad, right? Yeah, and he well, took Brad A. Brad or boys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I but mean. yeah, but I mean, A. Yeah, there's two of us, and one of us is A. The other one is yeah. B. Yeah, Sean has to it's represent nice. Canada. 
All right, we're we're in trouble if that happens. Okay, so you guys just you guys agreed to come on the Ramble podcast. Did you guys have a chance to watch or see some of the previous episodes so you see how it's run? Yeah, I had a look. Did my homework, Ryan. Okay, good. Yeah. It, make, it makes my job a lot easier when my co-hosts know what they're doing, so I appreciate that. Cool. Brian, we'll start with you. What's your love or hate of the Ramble film in general? My fandom with Sly, I think, is the rest of the mid-40s folks. We grew up with it. Anything Sly, we watched. I revisit it every now and again. I'm not as proficient as you are. I feel a little bit uh, slow here, so we'll see how it all pitches together. Of the first two Rambos, I think those are the spots, I think, to the point made in your previous episode. The rest of the Rambos are money grabs, and been good for them. They at least, well, I'll say this. At least Sly hasn't gone the Steven Seagal route, where the money grabs are painfully obvious. At least there's entertainment value uh, in the rest of the Rambos, but uh, one through one through two are there. Yeah, sure. Well, that's so. fair, and I, I think that's shared by most fans. I would say casual fans. I don't mean that as an insult, but most people that have watched the franchise at least once are like, "Oh yeah, the first two kind of stand on their own." The first one being the drama that it is the second one for the '80s action stellar film that it is, and then yeah, three, four, and five have their own fans as well. Yeah, there's people that like part three more than others. People that like part four the best. There's people that like the fifth one even. So, you know, we're, I'm going through all the films despite people's love or hate of the franchise. That's what makes the show interesting is we get different voices. Right. On. And I wouldn't say that I have a hate for it. I just no. have a, I mean, I'll watch it, right? I just won't seek it out and oh, you know, yeah. it is what it is. The interesting thing, though, that I would say about three, four, and five, and I think it's even along with the Rocky series, is that there's such an art of storytelling that if you really sit and watch, if you're just watching it for action, you'll miss some of these points, right? But there's things that have happened along the way, uh, specifically even in Rambo 3, where we're really seeing some some life lessons that you can learn, right? About like, you're really your only male role model that maybe isn't your family and how that'll draw you into some decisions that you wouldn't have made normally and then how those, you know, those things kind of show themselves. So I think there are some learning moments and that's what I appreciate about Sly the most is that most of his movies have some sort of life giving lesson in them. If you're willing to pay attention and look past the action. Absolutely. Sly loves those life lessons. It's been a while since you've seen it. Did you do a recent rewatch or? Yeah, I clipped through it quickly on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. Yeah. Okay. So it's been a while since I've seen it. I hadn't seen it for years before, and I didn't want to be completely outclassed. Oh, that's no, no, Um, no, no, not by you. Listen, I'm happy outclassed by you, Ryan. I didn't want to be outclassed by Sean. That's just my own personal standard. (laughs) So uh, I breached through real quick. I'm an American. I'm competitive. It's true. You know Sean's point. So, (laughs) so that's what I'm trying to be your favorite guest on this episode. And then uh, it's already happened. Thank you. You're such a suck up. Such <laughs> great, a great talking to you guys. I'm uh, 41. See you guys. Uh, see ya. Thanks for hanging out. Brad. We'll see you later. Leave on a high note. <laughs> Sean, same thing. Sly, the Ramble franchise, and this film, and give me a general overview of your uh, fandom. Yeah. So, I mean, like you and I, we know each other. We've discussed this at great nauseum. So, it started for me, Rocky 2, because I remember when I was a young kid, it was like, what? Uh, has to be uh, the early 80s, and it was showing on, like, City TV, right? Remember City TV? Late night movies? I don't know. You're from Victoria. I don't think they had City TV out there, did they? Yeah, yeah, City TV, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I made it. City TV in the, on the west coast of the United States, so let's not slow down. Yeah, well, Moses, right? Moses and Imer, he put his imprint on everything there, right? So anyways, oh, I'm, I'm watching Rocky II. I'm there going, this is the greatest movie ever made. My eight-year-old self is thinking, this is the greatest movie ever made. Now, it was a little bit longer when I ended up seeing Rocky 1, and I was so shocked that he lost. It's like, what? But then how do you set up a Rocky 2, right? And then you had Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, and then, of course, the Creed movies and all that, and Rocky Balboa, right? But, like, that got me into, then I remember it was 1981, and the movie network started, right? Like, it just started. In Canada. That was like a big to-do. TSN came out. Remember that? Everything, much music. It was like bang, 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 bang. Right. right? We're old. So. So. <laughs> so I remember here I am watching First Blood on the movie network because I was getting babysat because there's no way my parents would have let me watch that. Here I am, a kid. This is why I'm watching it. Now, Rambo 2, I wanted to watch it so bad, my parents wouldn't let me watch it because there's too much blood and everything. So I ended up. Taking the book out of the library, Rambo 2, I read the book. <laughs> I, read, I read the book. This is how pathetic I was. I wanted to be John Rambo, 
I remember I was walking around trying to figure out which bark is like the good bark to eat and stuff like that. What's the stuff that you could eat that makes a billy goat puke? It's like, what, what's that stuff? <laughs> I was really let down. I was really let down by Rambo 3. I was just looking at Colonel Troutman walking around. Like, at least in First Blood, he looked like somebody that could have been a Green Beret and maybe kicked your ass. By the third one, he's looking like some French cook. That beret was horribly foreign, Ryan. I'm looking at that beret. It's like he just put it on his head like it's like some sort of beret that is just like, a, yeah, I'm a pizza maker. And he's there. He's making poutine at La Fleur's. It's like, who is this guy? What? And then he's getting captured? What the heck? You trained John Rambo? You're getting captured? <laughs> hey, Brad, Brad, remember when I said to Sean, same thing, give me your general overview of your fandom. Of, and I got the life story of his babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you do this show with him every week. Sorry, he just comes over with his microphone and asks, and I just feel bad. Anything else you want to share, Sean, about your history, your childhood history? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. I just want to say that Ramble 3, do you know that Ramble 3 was the most expensive movie? It beat the Blues Brothers at that point in time. That was the most expensive movie made. I didn't know that, actually. Thank you Did for sharing. Did you know that? It broke Blues Brothers. The Blues Brothers was the most expensive movie ever made up until that point. Really? And you know what broke Rambo 3 after that? Titanic? No. Hmm. Kevin Costner. It was a Kevin Costner flick. Water, wa- Waterworld? Yeah, yeah. Waterworld. Waterworld. Hmm. That crazy that Rambo 3 lasted that long because Waterworld was in my teenage years. And, yeah. uh, you know, Rambo 3 was when we were four, Ryan. So it's crazy yeah. that Sean No, I was, I'm a little bit older than you. I was 13 when this came out. five? Oh, that's right. Yeah. You was older, Sean? I was, no, I'm older than Ryan, yeah. I think by two years. I think you're 50 now, oh, aren't Ryan. you? I am 50. And um, you have taken care of yourself, my friend. I figured we were the same. <laughs> I'm 47. I know. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I, just to try to of get course. us back on track. Do you think that Sly would bring in military experts to kind of talk about? Because I think that's like the main difference for me between him and Seagal is like the Seagal stuff is so far fetched. At least with Sly, you're always like, oh, that's plausible that I could take that down. There's no shooting down helicopters with handguns. Right. right? I think it depends on the film. I think I think the fourth Rambo film might have been more "quote unquote" realistic with the damage that people yeah. were taking with the fifty cal and things like that. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, Stallone has said in recent interviews that yes, it's laughable that he was running around with no shirt on. They wouldn't fight that way, but he definitely. I would say this about the Rambo films or the Rambo character is his honoring or he does it for the soldier. Like he, knew, it's an entertainment film, just like John Wayne being a cowboy. He's not a real cowboy, but it's paying homage to. Hey. What? Sacrilege. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The point is, is uh, he has a love for the uh, service people, and but I don't think a lot of it's realistic. No. It was the '80s. There wasn't a lot of realistic. No. It's not like Saving Private say. Ryan or pri- Saving yeah. Private Ryan. You know, they tried to showcase uh, realism there, but no, these films were right. definitely entertainment. Yeah. Ronald Reagan was buying into Rambo Two mm-hmm. and everything like that. Do you think he gave so just to let a little call? Hey. More shirtless. Run around more shirtless. I want you to hold that M50. Yes, and make I sure you're. I think Ronald up. Reagan wanted Sly to take off his shirt. That's my understanding. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, why not? Sly was a under Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was like probably the second most notable action action okay, yeah, hero. Yeah. At that moment in that time, right? I think Sly in the '80s was a bigger star. I think Arnold was better in the ni- like bigger in the 90s because he had True Lies uh, was a big one and Sly didn't really have the big films so I mean, other than Cliffhanger I, I, I don't compete the two or compare the two because I actually enjoy both I'll drink Pepsi yeah, or Coke absolutely. I don't care I actually love Arnold and but Arnold has it just becomes different genres at some point too I think yeah. that's why they don't compete yeah. as much right like you know you put like a Van Damme and Seagal in the same category you wouldn't put them in with Sly or Arnold it's like the Jackie Chan versus Jet Li discussion that's a legit discussion though it is yeah. for another day Sean yeah absolutely yeah I'm but not I'll, saying right now I, no I, I will say this about the Sly if anyone's listening that's coming from, from your podcast listeners or family or friends or listening to this episode I will say it's about Sly versus Arnold if I was honestly objectively Sly is the better artist because he creates he writes, he directs. Arnold has been a, has been in some incredible projects, of course. The Terminator, True Lies, Conan. I mean, he does some amazing, fun stuff, right? And I love those things. Uh, but Sly, the governor, 
That was his yeah, best and that's role pretty, yet, You know what? To be honest with you, that's pretty cool. He actually yeah. gave back to America in the way that he saw that he should. Whatever the politics side you're on, there's, here's a guy that came from a different country and served as governor. I mean, that's pretty cool. So anyways, all things aside, both are incredible celebrities in their own right. And I don't know if we're going to we have these celebrities anymore. They're literally dying before us. Except for Sly and Arnold, they're going. I, I love it. That's that's great. Sly Are you guys watching Tulsa King? I am. I love it. Absolutely love starting. it. It's never too late to start, Brad, so there's no rush. No, I just can't watch some TV shows with my children at that age. Of course. I got to stay up late to watch it. No, that's fair. Absolutely. We're, my wife and I are the same way. Okay, so that's great. So, yeah, we'll just roll into the film. So what we're going to do now, folks, is we're going to... Do a watch along. We're going to watch a little scene, discuss it. So, Brad, that's why you don't have to be switched on. I haven't seen this film myself in a little while, just so you know. Like, it's been a spell. Like, I've seen it many times, but I haven't seen it since doing this. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of watching it with you guys, too. So, we'll watch a scene, and then we'll talk about it and laugh at it or say it's cool or whatever is coming up. So, we just saw the scene where Kurtwood Smith, the actor Kurtwood Smith's character, told Rambo that Troutman has been caught by the Russians. So... I don't know if you guys saw that sequence of events before, or sorry, um, of trauma being caught, because we talked about in the previous episode how I can, we can't believe how garbage. <laughs> the, Sean, do you, do you know what I'm talking about? That, that operation, do you know what I'm talking about? The operation that Troutman was doing when he got caught? Do you, I have no idea. Okay. Like, well, they were trying why, to why, getting why, caught. Why, why, why was he there? I have no idea. Okay. Why was why was Lafleur there? I have no idea. Right. No okay. idea. So that was the and discussion. Smith, what's what's Red Foreman doing over there? All right. Well, well, enough of these deep cut references. People don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Red Foreman, <laughs> Lafleur. Welcome to my world. Oh Ryan. my Welcome goodness. To my world. So yeah. Uh, so that's where we last left off. So Rabbles received the news. He's asked, "Can I go in? Can, you know, will you send me in?" And the government officials like, "Well, if we send you in, we will." Well, we don't know who you are. We'll have to. You're nobody. And Rob was like, "I'm used to it." So <laughs> classic. That's that actually sounds like my military career. Nobody knows who I am. <laughs> nobody cares. I'm used to it. So I feel you, Ramble. I feel you. Okay. So here we go. All right. So uh, welcome back. Uh, those who are obviously listening to this on iTunes or watching this on YouTube, it's going to be a little bit of a jostling here. We might look a little bit different. I got a haircut <laughs> since we started recording. Uh, we've changed some outfits and what have you. But what happened was, long story short, I went to go stream Ramble 3 via Netflix to, of course, Brad and Sean. And they couldn't see it. So I had to fix it. And it took a few hours. And these fine gentlemen were willing to come back on a few hours later thank you guys so much and we'll just roll right into the film so again we're going to watch some scenes we'll go as far as we want and we'll just see what the scene is talk about it and then you know crack wise about whatever we see and we'll move forward okay it sounds like a plan like it okay so we're in a place called Peshawar, Pakistan, near the Afghan border. Now, is this where your people are from? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not Pakistani. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm certain. Yeah, yeah. My cousin is though. Oh. Wait. Okay. I get it. But don't forget Peshawar, right? The Peshawarians. They're so close to Afghanistan. There. Well, it says near the Afghan border. Obviously, I mean, we're, we're talking about cousins. Really is what you're talking about across. Actually, my geography is terrible. How close are we talking? Look, walk across. Oh, yeah. The top of India there goes right into to that. Like oh. it's crazy to think about India and Nepal is right there. Then you go right into China. It's insane where India lies in all of that. India, obviously, when I say India, you got Pakistan on that side. Right? Okay. So there's a whole another country over there as well. So okay, all right. So that's where we are now. They had to do this back in the day because clearly two out of the three of us don't know our geography. No. And when this movie came out, no one knew their geography. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're seeing the hustle just bustle. See, seeing, a, seeing a badass American walking around in Pakistan. That's the way it is. It's like... Let that man walk around. That's right. All those people are brown. They're all kind of white. So he just mixes right in. He's got a pretty good tan going. He does. He does. Okay, so Rambo's walking the streets. But what I like is they're showing you the culture. You know, it's bustling of activity. We have street vendors weighing things. We've got 
carpets or rugs being sold. We've got the woman covering their faces. It's a show that it's almost otherworldly, right? And Rambo's just walking <laughs> the way he is, <laughs> right? But I love how it's almost like a Star Wars scene where they're on an alien planet, but it's just Pakistan. But the way they're presenting it to the American audience, it's a different world. How far are the Mujahideen in there? Who? <laughs> so Russia was fighting the Mujahideen. Right, and the mm. CIA was backing them, and out of the Mujahideen is where you end up getting the uh, Bin Laden. Bin Laden was Mujahideen, Taliban, right? And then, well, that's right. That's where you get the Taliban from after the fact. Yes, <laughs> yes. Are you trying to say that Rambo enabled the Taliban? Working, yes, he could have been working with the Taliban then. Yes, exactly it. Yes, Rocky stopped the Cold War, but R- Rambo caused nine eleven. <laughs> Rambo caused nine eleven. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign music playing. <laughs> like I was whistling and he's looking to see if it's for him. <laughs> like he's being catcalled on the streets of Pakistan. Of course, Rambles walked into what looks like some sort of armory gun shop. It does look like prosthetics there, some prosthetics as well. <laughs> like, oh, it's like, what's going on? Yeah. Here? Yeah, oh, there is right there on the shoulder. Right in front. Oh, yeah, wow, is that? Like prosthetics. Oh, I guess for the uh, the soldiers, when they get their arms and legs blown off, they get... They come hey, and don't the, forget... Yeah, you got to serve all the customers, and, Ryan. Don't forget the Princess Diana was walking around talking about all the landmines that was in Afghanistan back in the late 90s, right? Because of this war. Makes sense, I guess. You know what I've, what I've this realized this movie set me up for is that I always am suspicious of just draperies over a tent, and I always think there's going to be something really cool behind there, and I'm always let down. I think it's because of these movies where, like, you go behind the drapes, and it's armories, and it's prosthetic <laughs> legs, or, you know, some kind of really cool bar. That's what Alas, man. it's just someone who just wants to be in the dark and just is selling their wares that way. <laughs> It's some really, really misled introvert just sitting back yes. there like, Ugh. So shake away. Shagwale. You want to buy? Many guns here. No. I'm looking for Musa Ghani. What's your name? John Rambo. Where's here? That guy has had hours coaching from acting right there sure. that guy that was his only line he nailed it eh wait here <laughs> it reminds me of blood sport those side actors of blood sport <laughs> the monkey guy <laughs> okay you remember the monkey guy <laughs> oh i remember the monkey guy okay we're not- these are the basis for all of our ai video games that have like the sideline characters <laughs> this is where we got it from yeah <laughs> what i love is I've got this buff ripped one American guy coming into your shop and he's like, look, I'm looking for Musana Gaudi or Goody or whatever. And he's like, well, what's your name? Like, really? How many Americans <laughs> looking like me are walking in asking for this contact? Oh, that American. Okay, well, we just had, uh, well, who do you think it is? You know, Jim Rambo was in here last week and fooled me. <laughs> he fooled me. I want to make sure it was you. fool me again. Like, Matt. you don't have a network running around. How many white people are running around in Pakistan right now? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I like, Ryan? Bring the emerald thing from Rambo 2, eh? From the Vietnamese Co. girl there. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I, I know you don't listen to my show, Sean, but we already brought that up. So thanks for thanks for revealing that. Wow, <laughs> wow. thanks. I do listen to your show. I just, I like it. <laughs> So I'm also it, selling crutches right there. Look at that's amazing. There's so much going on in the background of this movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Look, Sean, that's your kind of place. They're pre-fit with the open-toed sandal. Love it. Brad, you brought up a good catch there. The prosthetic legs come with shoes. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to hurt your heels walking on the ground. <laughs> Over his shoulder, I think there's a pair of socks on one. Look. <laughs> there is, right there. You refer to phantom pain, right? When you lose a limb, you still get the phantom pain. So you get the phantom, my feet are cold. So people that lose their legs, my feet are still cold. Makes sense. They sell many in Afghanistan. Many landmines. Landmines. Yeah, I told you. What is it you want? I was sent by Griggs. Oh. You do not look like men Greek sent before. Oh, there you go. So they have had different <laughs> men sent before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Griggs, of course, is Kurt with Smith's character, I believe. 
the American uh, CIA guy or whatever, the government official. So I love how Griggs has sent people before to this establishment. He keeps sending Americans to this gun mm. amputee shop. And I love how this guy totally boosts Ramble's ego. You don't look like they've, you know, because you're like this statuesque man before us. You're this godly. He could be saying that he's shorter than oh, the guy. That how dare before. you? Stallone he is 6'2". could six be two. saying that. I Stallone mean. is 6'2". In shoes with two inch heels in them. I was curious. I listened before and I heard you say that there was a nod in one of the Rocky movies to his plastic surgery. I wonder if this is another uh, shot at uh, he's a little more air cheekbone. Well, so, that was the steroids. And How dare you? Yes. That's also some plastic surgery. Look at the bags under his eyes, how perfectly formed those things are. How, yeah. how dare look. both of you? How dare both of you? <laughs> Musana is about to say that you not look like you are with military. <laughs> Sorry. So now the reason being is because of the long hair. So as you know, Rambo has the mullet. So the idea being Griggs has sent military people before, but they have short hair. And now, as Sean very well knows, and probably Brad does now, now in the Canadian forces, the Canadian military, we can have Rambo hair now. You can have Rambo hair. All the time. Yeah, yeah. Rambo hair, buddy. I knew that the American military are allowed to do that and beards when they're over overseas in the sandbox, so to speak. Right. We're allowed to have that now. 24-7. I am Musarani. What is it you want? I was sent by Griggs. Oh. You do not look like men Greeks and before. Oh, man, just one person. You do not look like you are with military. I'm not. What you are? Mercenary? No. You are not with military. You are not mercenary. What are you? Los Tourist. <laughs> oh, looks angry. I'm no tourist. <laughs> I like how he's not offended by loss, but he's offended by tourists. <laughs> yeah, I'm lost, but I'm not a tourist. I misheard Musana before. He said you don't look like the man they sent before. My apologies. So they're referring to Troutman came here before. So that the Troutman looked like military. My apologies to that. So, Did Troutman even look military with that yes. beret? Yeah. Come on now, yeah, Ryan. He, I would have I would have picked up that colonel. Berets in films are usually poorly done. I agree. They always are. Yeah. yeah, and there's some guy with the sideburns, and it's just like, and now, you know what, if you're Canadian, yeah, that makes sense, but if yeah. you're American or anything else, it's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> but I love how Rambo is, like, offended. Like, I don't have time to joke around. He steps forward four or five feet, gets into this guy's face a little bit, and goes, I'm no tourist. <laughs> All right, relax, but Rambo. Lost. But like, he's lost. <laughs> but he's still lost. Sorry. Uh, do you know where the American is? Yes, in Soviet fort, near the village of Host. 30 miles of our border. Mr. Griggs, send you the supplies you ask for. You wish to see them now? Yeah. All right, so he's got a shopping supply list. It's ready for Wait a second. Is this what you ask for? Wait a second. Is this guy, yeah. is this guy the Afghani version of Q? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the, yeah. He's the Q, sure. But he's kind of like in part two, Co, the female. She was the right. ground contact for the Vietnam. And now he's the... Same idea. He's the local contact here to help the Americans. And they sent a shopping list supply for to have ready for Rambo. So when he arrives, everything's there. So we've opened up this case. Were glow sticks newish back in 89? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. There has to be a new thing then. I don't remember glow sticks before, let's say, the 90s. Because that wasn't even a civilian thing, right? Yeah. Well, let's see what the supplies that Rambo's asked for. and let's... Never seen these things before. What are these? Detonators. And this? What does this work? It's a blue light. What does it do? It turns blue. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't ask what the detonators do. <laughs> what are the it detonators? Looks like he's do? getting ready to go to like a rave party with RC cars, is what sure. I feel like when they open up that box. I also like how he broke one, and you don't get high yeah. in your own supply, Rambo. He had to do a demonstration. <laughs> Demo. Because this guy, what does he even mean to John Rambo that he has to show him one of these blue lights? That is now something you have wasted I know. on your mission to, to explain something to this guy who you just met. John Rambo is the original mansplainer. That's true. <laughs> well, the idea is, too, is kind of showing that the Afghanistan people, or their third world, they're behind on the times. The Americans have all this high tech. 
military equipment. So this guy is seeing this military equipment that, so Griggs put it together. He's now opening it up. Okay. Is this what you ask for? Yeah, all we see is detonators, glow sticks, and C4. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for any party. Can you tell me how many more men come with us? There's no rescue team, it's just me. Just you, come on, this is no good. I cannot take only one man to the fort. You need more men to help. Griggs said you take me in. Take me in. I am needed to take medical supplies. So if again, I this is that nod. It's the one-man army. Rambles, this is all we need. And he, this guy can't believe it. He's expecting to see, what, six, seven, maybe ten guys with Ramble. It's just me. It makes me wonder, because like it's like, okay, the guy who trained him is right now captured, and it's just him going in to save the guy who trained him. I don't know. It's, He's going to save his definitely. father is, is what I think Rambo's mindset is. That's right. It's the only father no, figure. I get it. I'm just there going like, okay, this is definitely 88. We know what this is well, about. Reagan is agree that in 88, back. real men carried backpacks. Like, there's no sling in the bag over your shoulder in 88. Look at that. You, yeah. you carry that thing with your hand. <laughs> he's carrying it out like this, you know, like he has to hold it out a little bit further than he needs to because he's got to work oh. the lats, man. You got to work the lats at all times. That's all trap right there, Ryan. Doing, yeah, exactly. sorry, sorry, my bad. Yeah. All right, so he goes on to say, if, if I not take it, <laughs> many people will die. Do you understand? Okay. I like the broken English they write for these guys. Many people will die. Do you understand? Well, I do not know who you really are. But by the way you look, I can see you have no experience in war. Do you? Come on, do you? I fired a few shots. Okay, this is where we have to have the laugh track because, you know, it turns blue. It's just me. You know, I'm no tourist. And then he's, I fired a few shots. Right. And all the Rambo fans, of course, who've seen the first two films, we're all, ha, 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 oh, Rambo. I fired a few shots. You know, because, you know, part two, he destroys old Vietnam by himself. And why would this guy says he doesn't look like, look, no, if I showed up to this place, Sure. I don't look like a, a, a warrior, but come on. To be fair to Sly and, and the Ramble character, he doesn't look like not a warrior. I don't know why he's saying... The guy's like ripped to shreds. He's big and he's old like yeah. stone-faced. The idea to say he doesn't look like a warrior is kind of silly. This is very poor writing because you can clearly see this guy's got some training. If you or me show up, yeah. me in my current condition, we show up as like, yeah, you don't look like... You've been to war. Like, well, well, Sean, if you showed up, you know. they would say you don't look like the Americans, period. <laughs> Come join our side. <laughs> yeah. Why are you wearing those clothes? Change your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> A few shots. Look at the scar on his face. What do you mean you don't look Come like you've on. been to war? <laughs> Maybe you should go back home and think it all over again for a very long time. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. I did think it over. You did? Well, this is your Sparrow choice. Farrah Fawcett hair is I was, <laughs> down the stairs. Can we go back 10 seconds so we have to see that hair? Look at the, the subtle wind blowing on his hair. Watch this. I did think it over. Right here, coming up. You did? Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some of the blow dryer just feathering that <laughs> thing out. You think, you think he was using Pantene for that hair, man? That's luscious exactly. hair. Look, that is beautiful hair. That is beautiful locks. <laughs> Whatever Dolly Parton was pitching in 1988, that's what he's using on his hair right there. When he was on a rhinestone, he's like, Dolly. <laughs> this is when Sly was losing hair. He was losing hair in the front. And you can see how he does that puffy in the forward, trying to like, how do you call it? By uh, expanding the hair that you have and kind of fluffing it out. Yeah, you're hiding the part here that yeah. goes bald. And, he's uh, hiding his widow's peak like a widow's like, peak. That's a big... Sly, no matter how much hair you have coming out of the back, the top is losing, brother. <laughs> but you know what's funny? At 76 years old, he has a full set of hair. I don't know how he grew he his does. hair back. I don't know how that happened. It's awesome. What's funny is the Musa character here. I will say, like, it's been a while since I've seen the film. I knew this guy was coming. I remember his character, of course. And I remember not kind of liking him, maybe. or found I don't find him as, I would say, annoying is the right word. But I actually kind of dig him a little bit more now in this rewatch. I think he's doing a good job with his character. But I think as a character that's a local that has to work with Rambo. I think he's legit. I think he's being fairly helpful and kind to the, to the Rambo character. Yes, he's a bit of comic relief, I guess you could say, but it's not too much. It's not like he's Jar Jar Bink. I agree. He's not over the top on any yeah. stretch. He's executing yeah. that. Yeah, he's subtle about it. He's pretty easygoing, upbeat yeah. without being 80s over the top, which I thought, yeah, so I'll give credit there for sure. But let me tell you, 
You cannot get this American alone. If you fail, do not blame me. I will accept no responsibility. He's got a Casio rich Sounds wristwatch on. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah go back. Yeah. You got to see it. Okay. I'm wondering if it's the World Timer. They call it the Casino Royale watch because that was from Octopussy when he was going after the Fabergé egg. Oh, and it was the exact same watch. <laughs> it's American alone. If you fail, do not blame me. Oh, I see. Yes. I will accept there your responsibility. <laughs> the pre G shock. So he says that I will not accept any responsibility if this mission goes to crap. If you get caught, killed, don't blame me. I love how Rambo was like, it was Mus- Musasa. It's his fault. He didn't give me enough blue lights. <laughs> Do you see all those SKSs back there? Yeah. Now we have a somebody spying. You know, Rambo's in town. Obviously, he sticks that's all the, like, uh, so That's so the that's initial the guy that was smoking a cigarette that went oh, yeah. to get the guy. Sorry. Hey, uh, what's your name? <laughs> that's right. okay so he's watching this transaction go along here so yeah. okay we have to assume maybe he's not really on team rambo i think that's what we're led to believe here okay. well that's why you asked for his name what's your name what's your name <laughs> okay so we're now where did they get this guy from okay this way <laughs> Where did they get this guy from? Straight from like casting. <laughs> yeah, the biggest looking Russian guy you got. Who do you got there? All right. So for our listeners, of course. So what what, what Sean, is, Sean is going on about? We now cut to the uh, Russian base that's been. Did they make this base for the Russians, or did they overtake some sort of sandcastle? It looks like a sandcastle in the middle. Yeah, got. Do you think the Russians made that? I don't know. This is the bad guy's lair. It's really kind of hokey. They have this big lair-like castle base for the Russians. <laughs> and now, like, what Sean's laughing at, they have this hulking Russian soldier, this guy. And that's a towel across his shoulders in that jumpsuit. <laughs> that's, those aren't his real traps. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. <laughs> this guy's dragging trauma. So now we're seeing trauma being dragged by this guy. He's caught. He's alive. Not necessarily well, but uh, let's see what happens to trauma here. He's got like some sort of strap around his neck. <laughs> so he was dragged through the hallway like a dog on a leash, but strangled as he's brought to the Russian leader. Was that a chess table that's in front of him? Probably. It's because they're I- Russian. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. He's ready for a quick game with Troutman. He's ready. <laughs> he's playing a solo game of chess. <laughs> yeah, it looks like somebody may have been playing with him. Or he could have just set it all up just so he could look like, look how big my brain is. Yeah, that's, that's right, Troutman. You're going to give in to me because I just put Ryan, I don't know if you know this or not, but Sean keeps the chessboard set up in his house. I think he's just giving us a tell there for what he really, how, why he does it. It's supposed to be a sign of intelligence. Like, I'm such a, uh, I'm such a educated, proper man that I just, I have a chess, chess set out ready to play. Anyone, anybody up for a game of chess? Anybody up for that now? Oh, no, not, okay, we'll just uh, pour some oh, brandy. No one else we'll knows some... how to play? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are the rules? Is it like checkers? Oh, checkers. <laughs> oh, there's an app for that. Sean showed me the other day. He's like, look at this chess app I have. Oh, Break number one in my friend group. This is the name of the group. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the idea here, the symbology here is the Russian army, they're playing chess while the Americans are playing checkers, you know. Checkers. Mm. <laughs> His beret looks good. It looks all right. Yeah, it does look all right. Yeah. Russian general guy sends the big bear away. My name is Colonel Zeisen, regional commander of this sector. Do you realize you are the first American captured in Afghanistan? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Give a trauma, like, kind of a bird. Congratulations, you're the first guy to get caught in Afghanistan. Oof, how does it feel? What's a colonel? doing all the way out there that was brought up in the previous episode and that's a great question i i don't know that's a high-ranking official i believe in the american military what's a colonel doing out in the front line you are not about to see that no be the day. canadian equivalent of that let's just say it's a commander right if you're talking navy terms okay when's the last time you saw a commander go and a boarding team board a ship that's right you know it, it's silly that he was a part of that mission 
Yeah. <laughs> Story doesn't work, fellas. Oh. <laughs> it's a plot device, you say. Mm. <laughs> I'm wondering he's about to say Nasarovia. Oh, no, congrats. So he says congratulations. I believe we are planning to supply enemy rebel forces with Stinger missiles intended to destroy Soviet aircraft. If I'm going to be interrogated, I want to be interrogated by your superiors. Out here, I have no superiors. <laughs> you're a POW and you're demanding to be interrogated by somebody at least one rank higher than you. Bring the Russian general right here, right now. Come out here and interrogate me. That's the whole idea. The idea being that this is insulting that I'm being interrogated <laughs> by somebody of a lower rank. All right, Trauman, easy. You're the first American to be caught. I don't, you're in no position to throw your weight around. I am in full command. You are alone here. A little bit of a film flub. The chess pieces are in different positions than they were when they started the conversation. And they were playing a little game. Side. <laughs> yeah, the camera was just looking at their head, so maybe they were like looking at each other's eyes, but they were moving pieces below the camera. You're right. I demand your superior check. <laughs> That's funny. They're playing eye contact chess. Yeah. Mm. Oh, look, he's got his family up here or something. What? Look at this picture up here. Yeah. I like it. He only loves the boy the most. The wife and the the youngest son are. Not his favorites. I don't know if that's his son up there. So you got this older kind of kid, or a young adult it's up the here. the same guy that's the guy in the bottom right. right here. Yeah, with his it's mom. It's the same guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It's the same photo. <laughs> it's like they cropped out that photo. and they. <laughs> that is, it's the same photo. They somehow cropped out his photo. Put it up. Why would you do that? He I really the like this kid. He loves the baby of the family. <laughs> Listen. Here's my two kids, and here's my, you know, looks like an attractive wife. But I really am proud of my son. It's the same picture. Okay, look at the photo. He looks like he's 30. Yeah. <laughs> but then they, they make him short looking in the other photo. They make him look like he's 12. They're trying to hide the sweater. Yeah. The stripe of the sweater in the top photo. But it's like they do a really bad job of it. I don't know, for being the most expensive movie made at that time period, it's like they really didn't put their minds into this. I don't know. They probably didn't know the camera trick, the mirror camera trick at that point. That's probably where the camera was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Abandoned by your government. What do you want? Cooperation. Now, he says abandoned by your government. Now, this is kind of a replay of the events of part two. Rambo was abandoned by his government, caught by the Russians there in Vietnam. Then he was tortured. I mean, Trauma's about to be tortured. They're both caught and tortured by the enemy, by the Russians, actually, in just two different countries. Yeah, so I love how they said it in both films. These prisoners have been abandoned. Do they say this to every POW that gets caught? You've been abandoned. No, I got caught. I wasn't abandoned. <laughs> this sector has been under total control for over five years. There is little more I can do here. It is, as you say about challenges so what i love here is the history lesson we have lenin in the background yeah no stalin and not even the current leader it's like well, we just had to do lenin we just <laughs> there's also a baby photo there is no. a baby photo up there is that a grandkid or is that the son when it was a baby who knows yeah, maybe <laughs> but we on to the lenin and uh, this is a picture from 1863 of Lenin, baby Lenin. <laughs> and there is some sort of like news article that he's posted to his wall. Yeah. Is, is that his favorite teacher who won Teacher of the Year Award or something? I don't yeah. Some lady. Is like it's next to like a Dr. Pepper ad? Is that a bottle of Dr. Pepper on the wall? <laughs> no, that's a that's that's something from Moscow. Like yeah, it looks like a building. building. It looks like a phallic yeah. shaped building for sure. Look at the head on that thing. <laughs> Uh, you can see it. it looks like a two-liter bottle of soda. <laughs> <laughs> if you supply to probably me, a photo of Putin as a baby on the wall, wall, isn't it? Oh, maybe it could be. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Now keep in mind if the, if Rocky and Rambo are in the same universe, keep in mind Rocky three years previous to the events in this film ended the Cold War. Just keep that in mm -hmm. mind. It is as you say, without challenges. If you supply to me worthy information about more Stinger missiles you are planning to deliver, it could provide a way out of this for us both. After all, in the end, what everyone really wants is peace. The Kremlin's got a hell of a sense of humor. This guy thinks he's got Stinger missiles coming through, which I don't understand. I don't get what Colonel Troutman could actually say to this guy. Okay, fine. 
We're bringing Stinger missiles. You bet. Buy the truckloads. Do you think these Stinger missiles are just going to be out in the open somewhere that he can just go pick up? If they truly had Stinger missiles, you would suspect that they're going to be under heavy guard by American soldiers. How would Troutman's information even saying, fine, they're 20 kilometers to the north. They're going to be on the roadway 5 o'clock tomorrow. Good luck grabbing them from the American brigade that's carrying the weapon. And the second thing is, why are we transporting these missiles through the land? Can't we fire these things from a long ways away? <laughs> Now, I don't know what the range of Stinger missiles are, but I suspect they're more than a couple miles. You don't even have to be near the base. You can fire these things off from a distance. I'm trying to think with Russia, they're right above there, right? So they could, the U.S. was delivering these missiles there. It would be for the Mujahideen, and then it's just like, okay, where are they putting them? I, I don't know. That's probably why that they're trying to bring them into the region. That's the only thing I could think of. So it's about five kilometers. They're so not as long as I thought. Quick Google search, five kilometers is the range of Stinger missiles. All right, fair enough. But again, they're going to be guarded. These aren't just out in the open where you can pick them up. How do they carry these things? At night with their lights on. They carry them at night with their lights on, like we've previously seen in this film. Yeah, they they put the blue lights on the missiles. Yeah, it's... (laughs) The thing is, these missiles, if they're in the area, it's irrelevant. You can't do anything about it. You can't just grab them like ammunition on the ground. Like, these are missiles. No, no, no. What I love about a Russian uh, officer here is that his uh, accent... Falls into British and then comes back to Russian, you know, it's like, it's, it's flimsy. It's flimsy. Yeah, it's not bad. Better than I could do, but yeah, it's, it's he might yeah, be a British it, actor. Well, obviously, he never listened to, what is it, Billy Crystal's whole entire thing about just saying, locker, locker books, locker books. <laughs> a no, locker books. I, I missed that one, Sean. Yeah, you could say locker books. Maybe for your next podcast series, Ryan, you can do the great action star Billy Crystal in Diagnosis. <laughs> 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 was it in uh what one is he in no that wasn't right. the one with uh, the dancer the dancer analyze man. this analyze this analyze that but he was with that dancer and i can't remember what the heck that movie was called right now for the life of me where they're playing cops yeah okay i'll save it for an episode please explain you talk peace and disarmament to the world and here you are wiping out a race of people we are wiping out no one I think you are too intelligent to believe such absurd propaganda. Now again, where are the missiles? I don't know anything about any missiles. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My history of this isn't very good. Were the Russians there wiping out Afghanistan? Uh, that's what they were doing? They were trying to conquer. They wanted Afghanistan. There was a, it's a strategic area. It's sure. a strategic area to have okay. for Russia, right? That's why they still have their little land bases in Syria right now. They're trying to make inroads in that area because they have nowhere else. They're landlocked up at the top. So Afghanistan would have been a very vital area to have. But Afghanistan has been at war for like a thousand years. Can't beat these people. This is what they do. It's like, oh, you come? You want to take us over? Uh, we're going to fight. Didn't Bush do shock and awe? <laughs> well, that's the thing is that the U.S. that comes in. It's like shock and awe. You're committing genocide. Wait a second. We bombed some innocent people ourselves. Ah! <laughs> it's like... Shocking the weapons of mass destruction. That's right. They're there. <laughs> oh, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the missiles, the weapons of mass destruction that Rambo left behind. Okay. I like how he pronounces missiles back at him. You know what I mean? Like how he says it, where it's like plausible deniability, like with your kids, you know? They say the pronunciation wrong, and they're like, no, I didn't say dollars. I said doll hairs. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> There <it> feels- you go. <laughs> That's right. I don't know anything about any missiles. Right. Now, trauma is telling the truth. It always helps when you're being interrogated to use truth because you sound more believable when you're telling the truth. Trauma actually doesn't know. He's not there about missiles. He's actually here to kill this guy. That was the mission, I believe, was to take this guy out. I believe that was the mission. I think you are too intelligent to believe such absurd propaganda. Now again, where are the missiles? I don't know anything about any missiles. Of course you do. But you do not seem to realize I am providing a way out for us both. You expect sympathy? You started this damn war, now you have to deal with it. And we will. It is just a matter of time before we achieve a complete victory. <sighs> you know, there won't be a victory. Every day your war machines lose ground to a bunch of poorly armed, poorly equipped freedom fighters. The fact this is, is that you underestimated your competition. If you'd studied your history, you'd know that these people have never given up to anyone. They'd rather die than be slaves to an invading army. Oh, wow. It's very prophetic. <laughs> right, because of the Ukraine war. It's almost like you could use that dialogue for the Ukraine war. 
or even America going up and trying to fight these guys in Afghanistan is like, oh, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, <laughs> we can't beat them. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Disagree to disagree on what the war means. Right. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. But they would rather die than be slaves in any invading army. That's true. I mean, that goes for any country, I would say. I would be the same way if a country truly decided to invade Canada or the U.S. Yeah, I would use whatever means was in my house or whatever means necessary to not be a slave. Oh, that, but that goes for most humans. Most humans would rather die than be a slave to anyone. So, or, you know, captors, so to speak. So, so I know that's kind of hand me dialogue. I know it's a bit of politicizing, but I really like Richard Crenna. I think he's a great actor and he just really hams up that dialogue. It's that type of speech that he's speaking to the Russian leader, but he's also speaking to the audience in the theaters. And yeah. I, I like the way he delivers it. If, had he decided to be a politician, the same Richard Crandall, let's just say he decided to be a politician, he would be a great speaker. It is that you underestimated your competition. If you'd studied your history, you'd know that these people have never given up to anyone. They'd rather die than be slaves to an invading army. You can't defeat a people like that. We tried. We already had our Vietnam. Now you're going to have yours. So, you wish to test me? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I love that where he's telling this Russian guy, like, look, we had our Vietnam. We know what it's like to be visitors in another country that we don't know. And you're going to lose a lot of people trying to fight for something that's not yours. You'll never hold on to it, even if you were to, quote, win. You're never going to keep these people in check. The U.S. had North Korea, the Korean conflict that ended up in a stalemate. They had Vietnam where they had to leave. They had Afghanistan where they had to leave. The U.S. knows. They, <laughs> they know. And now Russia has Afghanistan, so they both tread to the same ground there. Now Ukraine, you know, it's like, okay, you world powers, take it easy. Huh? Take Wait, it easy. This is actually a question I had on one of my, my other podcasts. I do the Worst of the Best podcast. My brother and I do that one together. And we had the question that I actually don't know the answer to, and this is – a serious question. It, don't be long if you know the answer. I'm just curious. What is Putin's, what is the end goal that he has? The only thing I could tell you about Putin's end goal on that, but I think he just wants to bring back the CCCP. When you start putting missiles on top of places and then Ukraine was like talking about joining NATO, it scared him. Because if you have a look at just in that region there that he ended up coming in and taking a Donbass region, if you have a look at that, that's how Hitler was able to go straight into Moscow because there was no mountains, no nothing. It's just all valley, okay. right? Okay. It's just all, that's what they were worried about is that that's an area there that you can end up going straight into Moscow if you ended up just coming and militarizing on us. I know that's why he ended up taking the Donbass region, but why did he end up starting the whole entire thing after that? It's because I think he's probably got syphilis or something and he's going a little mad. I don't know. Okay. My thought is that I think that he has some health issues and he's on his way out and his goal is to create as much chaos as he can. It's like, I think he's probably trying to draw other countries into a war just to cement his legacy as the greatest Russian leader. Yeah, with the Ukraine war, it's just so messy that I'm actually confused. I wish there was some sort of machine I could type in the question and find out, but... There's a lot to talk about that, but yeah. I don't... <laughs> History is written by the victor. That's so. right. Yeah, And we're watching a true documentary here, so let's watch what happened here between <laughs> Russia and Afghanistan. So. What about you? Oh, more strangulation. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think he would know that word by now, because I think they probably yelled it a lot trying to get him down the street if he looked at all the bruises on his neck. <laughs> what the word of the command was, was that the guy's name or Mishkia? Strangle him. Go to it. Didn't say in the subtitles what he actually said. It would be... Yeah, it's probably he just talked gibberish there, and then it's like, uh, we don't know what he said, so... Funny enough that you say that again, talk about Rocky IV. Remember the end of the uh, movie where Rocky says, if you can change, everyone can change, and he has that yeah. Russian translator? A friend of the show told me that he has a friend who speaks Russian. His friend told him that it was basically gibberish. That... <laughs> <laughs> probably what a lot of those guys in the 80s, are, yeah, I've got a place speaks Russian. It's like that sign language guy that got up in front of Barack Obama. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I interpret. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So now we see Rambo with, and his guide, Masusa, whatever his name is. Four horses. They're like taking a tour through like southern Utah, looks like. Yeah. It's beautiful. I wonder where this is filmed. Yeah, we're going through this to the wilderness, so to speak, in Afghanistan with horses, kind of like Lord of the Rings style. They're traveling through the mountains of Mordor. I can guarantee you it's not filmed in like Afghanistan. Probably not Afghanistan, but... Yeah. 
a better podcaster uh, in a podcast would have this kind of information for a ramble podcast, but I don't. <laughs> 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 but I love this uh, scenery shots and... You know, we get that kind of flourish of the music. It's very epic, you know, as they travel. Israel, Thailand, and that's Arizona there, buds. So so Arizona, wow, cool. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) This is Afghanistan. (laughs) Does that look like a real landscape, or is that like a, what do you call the the mats or M-A-T-T-E painting? No, I know what you're talking about. (laughs) <laughs> they just like walk it into some places just on the studio. Yeah, that doesn't look like a real footage of land there, does it? That could be Flagstaff. No. Yeah, Alexander this, the Great. He yeah, tried to yeah. conquer Flagstaff. Let's hear this history lesson that Musasa is going to give. So they're overlooking this big vast land of nothing. This is Afghanistan. Alexander the Great tried to conquer this country. Then Genghis Khan. Then the British. Now Russia. But Afghan people fight hard. They never be defeated. Ancient enemy, make prayer about these people. You wish to hear? Mm -hmm. Very good. It says, May God deliver us from the venom of the cobra, teeth of the tiger, and the vengeance of the Afghan. You understand what this means? That you guys don't take any shit. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. It's so good. It's so good. It broke that one down, man. <laughs> Rambo, just with the one liners this episode in particular, he's just the one liners coming out of him. What do you say, Sean? Which is a better prayer? The prayer of the Afghani people or the prayer of Krom? <laughs> my gosh. No, the prayer of Krom. The prayer of the Afghani people sounds like when I was in Mombasa meeting that one guy that had a tattoo of a cobra and telling me why he has a tattoo of a cobra because he ate the blood of a cobra. It's oh, like, wow. <laughs> it's like, what? Do you want to remind the listeners the prayer of Krom? Oh, my gosh. I'd have to look that up right now. I haven't, I haven't uh, recited the prayer of Krom. Okay, well, you look it up. You, you look it up because I think it's important that the listeners understand, so they can make a decision too which prayer is better. Yes, something like this. We go now. Okay, so of course we've seen now a helicopter flying around. They're nearing enemy territory. So Musasa's like, we got to move along. We got to keep moving. So, yeah. so Sean, I want to hear the rendition of... Uh, yeah, I got it. I okay. got it here. All right. Before you read it, get yourself yeah. ready. I want to hear the prayer again, just so we can hear back to back. Ancient enemy, make prayer about these people. You wish to hear? Mm-hmm. Very good. It says, May God deliver us from the venom of the cobra, teeth of the tiger, and the vengeance of the Afghan. You understand what this means? That you guys don't take any shit. Okay, so... Now, Sean, are you ready for the prayer of Krom? Krom, I have never prayed to you before. I have no tongue for it. No, and not even you will remember if we were good men or bad. Why we fought and why we died. All that matters is that today two stood against many. Valor pleases you. <laughs> so grant me this one request. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen... The hell with you! <laughs> Beautiful. I fe- video and audio is just like two seconds <laughs> off. It was hilarious to watch that go. <laughs> yeah, Sean, Sean has a bit of a leg. Are you get leg on that side too, Brad? I can see it. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. any which way. Beautiful. I I will say uh, the prayer to Krom is pretty powerful. It's hard to beat. <laughs> Nothing beats praying to your God and just saying, if you don't give me what I want, to hell with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my kids ask for Christmas gifts every year. <laughs> mm-hmm. To hell with you, Dad. <laughs> Before we close, I want you guys to say again where people can find you on your socials, on Facebook, and what your show is about. I don't think we quite said at the beginning what your show is actually about. So- hey, Sean and I uh, co-host the A&B Show. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, socials, the A&B Show. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are where we live the most. Uh, we cover most sports, and there's always some general shenanigans and lots of laughs. Check us out if you have a chance. Love to see you. Ryan, thanks as always for being so gracious. I suspect there's Ramble listeners. Look, if you're a Ramble fan of my show and you're a fan of 
sports. I suspect there might be some overlap. Also, uh, tackle the hard hitting questions like is a hot dog a sandwich or not? Soup is just hot cereal. Today, I asked Brad if he would do Blue Angel at a campfire. Are you talking about lighting your fart? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, maybe don't listen to their show. I'm sorry. I don't know why I had them on. I apologize. Sean just dr- drug down the quality again. You want to go for that episode that's dropped today just to hear my response because it did not <laughs> disappoint. I didn't take kindly to uh, I'm suggesting I put my ankles behind my ears in any form of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean, love you. All right, guys, it's been truly an absolute pleasure having you guys on the Ramble Podcast. I should say that I've been on your podcast a few times. So anyone listening to the Ramble Podcast and they like me, I don't know why you do, but if you like me, you want to hear me on their show, I've been on their show a couple of times. You'd have to go back to the archives to see which episodes they were. And I guess some of the news might be out of date, but, you know, still fun times to to talk about sports because I know nothing about sports. So other than my hockey team. Okay, so other than that, that is it. Thanks, guys, for coming on. But the episode is over. I didn't ask you. You asked me. You started this podcast. Hey, nothing is over. Nothing. Just don't turn it off. Mm -hmm.